welcome to Neyland Stadium. We wanted to just step aside and let you enjoy the sights and sounds of what it's like in the big house in East Tennessee. It'll be another crowd of over 105,000 to see these two teams meet. They have met many times in baseball, several times in basketball, but this will be the first ever meeting in football. And there's Andy McCollum in his fourth year as the head coach of this team that has moved from Division I AA to Division I and has done it apparently very successfully. There is the winningest active coach in the game today, Philip Fulmer, in his 11th year. And of course, he attended and played for the University of Tennessee. So Philip is a lifelong man who has been wearing the big orange, and he is from Winchester, Tennessee. Well, the series record today, the first ever meeting between these two. Terrence, we now look and see what Alabama, how well they played against Oklahoma. And we realize this MTSU team we thought would be a lot better than Wyoming. They may be even better than we thought. Let's take a look at the weather. It's 89 degrees, the humidity 50%. The wind, they say, is calm, but the we feel a little breeze right here, and forecast is for sunny skies, at least for a little while, and then the forecast will call for darkness because we will finish this game under the bright lights of Neyland Stadium. Your official, Steve Landis, is the referee working this ball game today. Larry Leatherwood, Johnny Crawford, James Bing, senior, Jim Jumper, Greg Thomas, and Stan Murphy, a Southeastern Conference officiating crew. Tennessee will be receiving MTSU kicking off. And Terrence, MTSU, I'm sorry, will be receiving. Tennessee will be kicking off. Terrence, it appears that the Blue Raiders have been able to, in just a couple of years, really stock this team with quality football players really good football players and they've gone from winning three games their first year to six to eight wins so this is a good football team that tennessee will face today it goes into the end zone there will be no return it is philip newman the transfer who came here from georgia tech we saw him do that a couple of times in the wyoming game and kind of figured he might have won a job but terrence but the flag is down We'll see what the official calls here, but they kick, booming it into the end zone, and that's a weapon that we've been looking for. On the kicking team, five-yard penalty and re-kick. Well, you heard Steve Landis encroachment, so Tennessee will have to kick it off five yards further backfield. The yep. kick return men for the Middle Tennessee State team, and they are a very solid uh, punt return and kick return team as well. So they do a nice job. It's uh, Kerry Wright and Richard Lee. Richard Lee, by the way, does not probably get as much publicity as he deserves because of Dewan Hicks. But a lot of people say he's just as good as Dewan Hicks. I think they're really talented at the tailback position. I think they have good depth there. And I think they're better at the tailback position probably than Tennessee because of Tennessee's inexperience. <laughs> So Tennessee will have to kick it off again because of the encroachment penalty. Newman really booted that first kick out of the end zone. I think this atmosphere is a little different than Georgia Tech, and I think he's a little pumped up on that first <laughs> kick, Bob. He's got a good leg. In fact, the kicking game against Wyoming for Tennessee in the opener was just near perfection every phase of it. Here's his re-kick, and this one's going all the way to the corner of the end zone. That is as perfect as you can get. There's no chance for a return, even if you wanted to bring it out of the end zone. You can't get any more perfect than that. As perfect as you can get, but a little too close for comfort. Here's your Shoney's offensive line for the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. West Brooks, Coy Ellerby, who, by the way, is a very good center, and... Pasco and Grant Gant are the men up front. And the receivers. Enrico Hines is the quarterback. And of course, they'll find the fine running back. Number four. You're going to see an awful lot of him today. Dewan Hicks. Actually, Middle has promoted him to some extent for the Heisman Trophy. He tries to bounce outside. He gets a couple of yards. And then he is driven back. 
going to wind up with about a yard, and it is Kevin Whiteside, Keon Whiteside, who made the stop. Keon Whiteside, a very solid performer in the opener, a very good player for Tennessee. Omari Hand on your Shoney's Tennessee defense. Rashad Moore, Denise Neal, and Carlton Neal. Eddie Moore, Keon Whiteside leading the attack there. Willie Miles, Julian Battle, and the rest of the secondary. Deron Hicks going off his right tackle, and he does get about two yards this time before Eddie Moore, the strong side linebacker, made the stop. I tell you, Battle and Rashad Baker are probably, as a pair, two of the better safeties in the country right now. I would agree with you. I think that's one of the strengths on the Tennessee defense this year is their secondary. Allows them, Battle does, to be able to come up and have good run support. Enrico Hines, the quarterback, goes into the shotgun. There's movement along the line. They'll blow the whistle. It appeared middle might have backed up a little, but we will have to wait and see if maybe Tennessee forced that. Again, it's the Southeastern Conference officiating crew headed up by Steve Landis, a veteran official here in the Southeastern Conference. Balls have a week off after this, as does Middle Tennessee. And then the next game in here will be a little battle with snap. Florida. The defense violated the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. That's a five-yard penalty. Third down. Well, you heard it. The defense caused the motion by MTSU. Let's take a look. Demetri Beal trying to get a head start. I don't know if that was caused by the voice inflection by Hines, but he, he was going early. Looked like it was a good call by the official. And so it puts MTSU now in a uh, third and two situation. Need to move it to the 30-yard line for a first down. It'll be third down. We're early. Sideline warning on the visiting team. Their first one. Sideline warning for the Blue Raiders. Andy McCollum throws his team to get back. He spent a period of seven weeks as an employee of the University of Tennessee, so he will not be eligible for the pension plan, but <laughs> he was here briefly in the spring a few years ago as a linebacker coach, then returned to Baylor as their defensive coordinator. And Rico Hines hands off to Deron Hicks, and I don't think he made it. He did not get the first down. He did not reach the 30-yard line. The whole middle of the ball defense led by Keon Whiteside made the stop. Whiteside really making his presence known early, Terrence. He has, and Whiteside's been a consistent performer for them. And I think he's one of the guys on defense that's going to have to step up for Tennessee in Burnett's absence. Tennessee, over the last couple of years, has been really good versus the run. One of the better defenses in the country. It's going to be tough for Middle Tennessee to establish the run today on Tennessee. Well, we have got yet another penalty against the Tennessee Vols. And this one is going to be the big one and will give MTSU a first down. And if you're Philip Former, this is frustrating because he said, if you're a good football team, you make your most improvement from game one to game two. This isn't the way he wanted to start this football game. So MTSU gets a break. Instead of having to punt the football, standing back at about their 15-yard line, here they are first down out at the 42-yard line. Tennessee defense jumping in and out, faking the blitz. They do not blitz. The handoff once again is to Juan Hicks, and once again, Tennessee's big orange swarm all over him. Tennessee giving him no chance to move with the football. Kevin Simon, the man we have been talking about, Terrence mentioned as the replacement for Burnett. And Kevin Simon is really good at the uh, versus the run. Here's the keeper out on the left flank and up to the 45-yard line before the stop is made by Edward Kendrick. Enrico Hines is a pretty good runner and a very, very effective thrower, especially in the short game. Probably not that effective in the deep game. In the shotgun. Little shuffle pass. Nowhere. Tennessee all over that. Simons and he read it right from the beginning. Hicks had no chance. There he is, Kevin Simon. They were worried about Kevin Simon as far as dropping back in pass coverage and understanding all their schemes. They said the one thing he does good is play the run. Look at this formation. They've got half the team out here on the uh, left.
left flank. Now they, as what Terrence was talking about, a little trickery, a little razzle-dazzle. Now they line up in a pretty normal formation, and the punt is away. It's going to be taken by Baker, and he's up to the 30 and the 31-yard line before he is dropped. So Tennessee's defense, very solid there, gave up some yardage on penalties, which the coach won't like, but the defense solid. You are watching University of Tennessee football on CS Benching Stand. A couple of little mistakes in the penalty department, but Terrence, I would think Johnny Chavis is a happy camper right now the way his team started. I would agree with you, and Tennessee's going to be aggressive on defense, and they have a lot of team speed, so whatever middle's going to try to do, they're going to have to do going straight at Tennessee. That's the best way to beat speed. The punt was good for 36 yards. The return by Baker was for 10 yards. And so Casey Clawson and the Tennessee Volunteers now will go on offense. Coach McCullum has had to really fight to recruit because, let's face it, he's recruiting against Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky. He's recruiting against Georgia. He's recruiting against all the named schools in the Southeastern Conference, as well as all the others who come in here. So he has had to take players that teams, in some cases, Terrence might have slightly overlooked or maybe did not properly evaluate. And I would agree with you. And he also has one thing in his benefit, I think, I think he's able to to allow as many partial qualifiers on his team as he can have scholarships for, and that's something that you can't do in the SEC, so that plays in his favor. So if a kid comes to a Tennessee or wants to come to Tennessee, can't get in, Middle Tennessee's a great place for him to get into football. So the ball's put it in play at the 31-yard line. Boston's going to throw on a first down. Got a man wide open, Jason Witten. The tight end is down to the 30-yard line of MTSU. Tony Sultan, left cornerback, finally chased him down. So the big tight end, who was double and triple teamed against Wyoming a week ago, finds himself wide open right down the middle, Terrence. Middle Tennessee's in too deep, and Witt just takes off right down the middle, and Casey Clausen does a good job of finding really good protection. Clausen has time. The middle of the field is wide open. Tennessee was looking for a compliment to Kelly Washington, and the first thing that came to my mind is Jason Witt. Well, he's a good one. A junior. Here's Clawson standing up going. A little miscommunication right there. The receiver was headed downfield, Leonard Scott, and he expected Leonard to turn it out maybe toward the sideline or curl back in. He did not, so it's a miscommunication there. Let's take a look now at your Tennessee offense brought to you by Shoney's, Munoz, Resford, Wells, Herrera, and often Hizzle are the men up front. Fawson, Cedric Houston starts at tailback. Troy Fleming, with Leonard Scott, and Tony Brown are the starters today at wide receiver, but we'll see a lot of running backs and a lot of wide receivers. And if you're Tennessee and Casey Claus, and that frustrates you because Leonard Scott is a senior on this team, and he's, he doesn't know to run the right route. Let's take a look now at the Shoney's defense for Middle Tennessee. Jerry Vanderpool, Thomas Johnson, and Curtis Danley are the front three. And in the linebacker department, and they really jump around, Durham, Arnold, and Kemp. Their cornerbacks actually at times come up and play sort of a linebacker position. The LP and the right P designation is for left pony and right pony. And they're the guys who ride up sometimes, I guess you could say, Terrence, and play sort of a combination of cornerback and linebacker. I'm not sure I've seen that before. But I'm, uh, anyway, I'm, it obviously works. <laughs> I'm glad you knew what RP and LP stood for. <laughs> I had to make a call. I looked at that and I said, well, I better check on that because that's new terminology to me. And I've been around this game for a long time, but they do uh, use that. And those are the numbers on Casey Claus in, in the game last week against Wyoming. And I thought, as we talked about, I thought he played incredible last week. Except for the interception, I thought he played a flawless ball game. He was in control, very mature in the huddle. I think he's going to play well for Tennessee this year. He's just comfortable at the quarterback position. Tennessee came out throwing last week uh, on the first series. And Randy Sanders, of course, made that determination along with the head coach. There's Randy, the offensive coordinator. And they came out throwing here today. Lawson steps back, and he still wants to throw the football. He's got a man open. 
down at the 19-yard line is downtown Tony Brown. Tony Brown picking up where he left off last year. This is all Casey Clausen. Casey Clausen does a good job of looking off the defense. If you look, he's looking at Witten, allowing Brown to be able to bend back to the middle, and he's wide open. Good catch, good job by Casey Clausen. Covered 15 yards. They put it right on the 15-yard line. Where it'll be first down and 10. That's the sign of a mature quarterback, one that's in a groove, able to look the defense off. Lawson with two receivers set to his left. He gets it off. Big hole, Cedric Houston heading for the corner. Touchdown, Tennessee. Cedric Houston, 15 yards with good blocking at the point of attack and then good running on his own. Good job by Cedric Houston. Good blocking up front by the Tennessee offensive line. Does a good job of finding the seam and show some speed to get outside. So the Orange people are happy. By the way, there's a good crowd here from Middle Tennessee. A lot of blue. Maybe six, five or six thousand fans at least, along with their fine band. Alex Walls will attempt the extra point. Reagan holds, it's up and it's good, and the Volunteers break on top, seven to nothing. The big play was the completion to Jason Witten, and then they marched right downfield. Let's take a look at the touchdown again, Terrence. A good block there by Troy Fleming, and Houston does the rest on his own. Good blocking downfield by the wide receivers, and Cedric Houston knows a lot of tailbacks are going to play today. I need to make the most of every carry I get. Well, that's his third touchdown on the young season. Just a good block by Troy Fleming on the blitzing linebacker, and the rest is all Houston. You see his there, his cutting ability, good stiff arm, and he's off to the races. Cedric, a very compact, not as big as Javari Davis, but still in the 212, 213 pound range. Jabari's probably 234, 235 right now, and you'll see him someday at Davis at fullback as well as tailback, which we did last yeah. week. There's Cedric Houston, the young man from Arkansas. I had a conversation with Paul Eels this past week on radio. Paul is the voice of the Arkansas Razorbacks. First question he said is, how's the guy who got away from us? How's he doing over there in Tennessee? And I said, quite well, thank you. We love it. I say Woody McCorby has done a good job with those young running backs. He's really created some competition there, but healthy competition where they all want to see each other do well and they really push each other. And that's the mark of a good coach. Tennessee will be kicking off. Once again, it'll be Kerry Wright and Richard Lee back to receive. And the kick, once again, is a good one all the way to the goal line. It's taken by Callaway. There and did he turn that ball loose down there? He got hit and really racked up, and he held on to it at the 10 yard line. Gabriel Wilson, a defensive back, blasted him. There he is, number eight. And he's a Juco transfer, and he said this week in the paper, just put me on the field. I don't care. I just want to play. And Tennessee has really improved on special teams. That was one of the things that they wanted to get done in spring practice and in two a days, and they have a healthy attitude about it. They put Callaway back there at the last second to return it. He took it right at the goal line and got it out maybe to the nine-yard line. So Enrico Hines takes to his tailback. A flare pass out here. Pretty good play. It completes to Tyrone Calico. And he gets across the 15 up to about the 16-yard line before Julian Battle, coming up from safety, made the stop. Covered seven yards when they finally stretch it and put it down there about a half a yard more than we thought. So, pretty nice play unfolded for seven. And Hines is at the shotgun. He gives a quick handoff to his tail back to Juan Hicks. And Tennessee is pretty well, I don't know if anybody's spying on him. If it is, it's Simon, because they're all over the place. Eddie Moore, this time, really was the first man to get a hand on him. But they're not going to let him get out of their sight. They know he's a dangerous guy. I, I would agree with you. And I, I think Tennessee understands that for Middle Tennessee to be effective, they're going to have to run the football. So now they're coming up to the line of scrimmage, placing a third down and one. No. Absolutely no. It is once again Kevin Simon who says, let's stop it right here. You know, 
Kevin Simons just leaving his feet in an unbelievable play. What an athletic move. Now remember, he's the guy who stepped in to replace Kevin Burnett. And as Terrence pointed out in our pregame, this guy coming out of high school was considered at that time the number one linebacker prospect in the country. Then got a knee injury in an all-star game and kind of put him behind, but it appears he has caught up big time. So now it will be a punting situation for the MGSU Blue Raiders. And their punter is Robert Billings. Richard Baker is back to receive. Short kick. He shanked it. Bad kick. Tough break for Middle Tennessee. Goes out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. The balls will start in great field position, already leading seven to nothing. You are watching University of Tennessee football on CS. That punt covered 18 yards. So, Terrence, I don't know if it's the pressure of 107,000 or playing Tennessee in Knoxville, but tough break. And you definitely don't want to give Tennessee the short field. Well, they have it. Clawson is back, rolling, looking, throwing the flag, complete. Down to the 31-yard line is Tony Brown. <laughs> Covers seven yards. Coming up, it'll be second down and three. Tennessee decides to roll Casey Clausen out. He has a lot of options. Jason Witten being one and Tony Brown the other. Brown does a good job of catching the football and just getting up field. That's what you want to do as a young wide receiver. Don't try to get too fancy. The thing that gives Tennessee an edge over most teams is their offensive line is so big and strong and talented they can experiment with their running backs and their passing game because these guys are going to protect them. They're going to give you a hole yard line goes the runner and he is driven back Cedric Houston about a yard but his forward motion will take him down to a first down Sultan made the stop for MTSU we are told that Alex Walls has pulled a muscle and will not play anymore in this ball game Tennessee's outstanding place kicker and field goal kicker. Here is Clawson on a fade pattern in the corner of the end zone, and it is intercepted. Rashada intercepted it. Leonard Scott was the intended receiver. Mohamed Rashada intercepts for MTSU. Two pass plays to Leonard Scott. One was a miscommunication between Clawson and Scott and this one was just a bad play all the way. I think Tennessee tried to get a little too fancy here. They didn't have to do this in Middle Tennessee. Didn't bite on it. Cornerback plays on us and a good play by Middle Tennessee. There's a the pump back. They were trying to get the give and go or the out and up. Middle Tennessee plays it perfectly. If you're Tennessee, you don't have to do that. You're good enough just to take the football and march it down the field on Middle Tennessee. Rashada was at the right place at the right time. Time to try a running play guard and tackle and got a couple of yards to Juan Hicks number four and there's Randy Sanders talking with his quarterback and probably saying basically what you just said and he's, tell, he's telling Casey I made the wrong call but if you don't throw it you make me look good they line up once again in the shotgun it's a muscle strain we're told that Alex Walls has and he will not play anymore in this ball game. And Rico Hines fires, almost intercepted. That Simon out there, it's Eddie Moore. <laughs> See, Eddie Moore has been just as uh, effective as Simon here early on. Uh, Terrence, both have been all over the place. He has, and he's really good in pass coverage. Just drops back in his zone, and Eddie's going to wish he had that one back. Linebackers don't get their hands on the ball much. Julian Battle was in the neighborhood as well. Ewell was the intended receiver. David Ewell. Again, MTSU in a third down situation, and they have failed to convert. Remember, they did have one on a penalty. Here is Enrico Hines firing out on the line. It is complete, and Tennessee hits him immediately. Tyrone Calico was swarmed by Willie Miles. Miles, who missed last year, did a lot of tough rehab work, came back, and has played very well 
in practice and uh, looked pretty good in the Wyoming game, too. As you talked about, Middle Tennessee using that quick passing game, but Willie Miles is the fastest player on the Tennessee football team, and he plays that well. So Billings will be back. Bunt Baker will be back to receive Robert Billings punting for the Blue Raiders. Steps into it. His last one was a shank job. This one is a pretty nice punt. All the way down to the 30-yard line. Baker back to the 40, the 45, the 46-yard line before he is driven down. Tennessee takes over first and 10, having their last drive stopped with an interception in the end zone. So let's see how Clawson reacts to that. Well, the book on Clawson is he is as cool as they come. So I wouldn't think an interception would phase him a great deal, Terrence. I would agree with you. He's the kind of guy can throw two picks and then come back and throw four interceptions. So he'll bounce back from that. Jabari Davis is in to replace Cedric Houston, so they start the rotation at running back. Big Jabari is in a tailback. Out of the eye backfield, a receiver split on each side. And it's off to the big guy, and nothing much there. Middle waiting for him in the person of Randy Arnold, the middle linebacker. Middle Tennessee's the linebackers are pretty active and uh, good football players, good athletes. Arnold moving that time well to the football. So Tennessee now will be looking at a second and maybe a nine yards. So they give him about a yard on that one. Ball resting at the 48-yard line. There's the big, big guy. And a lot of people compare him to Jamal Lewis. Size-wise, they are very, very similar. He might be a shade faster than Lewis, actually. Here's a pass out on the track completed. It's going to be a first down to Leonard Scott. So that looked like the play which they miscommunicated on earlier, Terrence, and this time they got it right. I would agree. I thought that you, you're right. That may have been the play. If you're Leonard Scott, take this ball and use your world-class speed. He's waiting on his offensive line to get out in front of him, and I think he waits a little too long. If you're Leonard, take it, hit the seam. I don't think anybody on the field will catch it. Well, he's one of the fastest men in America, of course, a track star, and actually was injured in the track season and had to do a lot of rehab work in the offseason and didn't get to participate in the summer drill as much as he would have liked to. They hit the middle with the big guy, and uh, Jabari goes down to about the 36-yard line before he is driven down. They use six tailbacks in uh, the Wyoming game. That would be counting Troy Fleming, who from time to time will switch over from the uh, fullback position to tailback. Let's take a look at the line play. There you see just a straight give up the middle and a good job by Middle Tennessee of pen penetrating the Tennessee offensive line. So now the balls are looking at second down and six. Casey stands up, fires out the front, complete. Down to the 30 and maybe the 29-yard line goes Montrell Jones. They're still waiting for him to, I guess, explode on the scene because he has all the talent in the world when he finally puts it together. Tennessee goes with this quick game, and Montrell Jones is a kid that plays better on game day than he practices. What the Tennessee coaches want to see him do is turn it up a notch in practice so they're comfortable enough to put him on the field during the game. Couple of catches for 17 today. First down and 10 at the 30 for the Vols. The give is to Jabari Davis, trying to follow his blocking, and MTSU did a nice job of jamming it up there and only giving him a couple of yards. Led by Dennis Burke, backup middle linebacker, making the stop. They really like this big guy when he gets Davis inside the 10-yard line. When they get down there, I think you'll almost see him exclusively at tailback. I would agree because he's a guy, he's not going to sidestep. He's not going to try to go around anybody. He's a north-south runner. Line up in the eye backfield and give it off to Davis. And he is really wrecked. Nice, nice hit by MTSU as they had Vanderpool up in the right position and he unloaded. There's the big guy. Take a look at that one again. And if Jabari Davis was asleep, he's awake now. Good penetration and a good tackle by Vanderpool. Well, when you see the head snap back like that, you know the contact is solid. I'm glad we're up here, Bob. Yes. <laughs> glad we didn't dress for this one. Third down and seven now. 
for Tennessee. So it's a big down. And they go with the full house backfield. They got the two receivers set on the left side, one on the right. Keep two backs in for blocking for Casey Clawson in the shotgun. And fire it out at the flat. It's going to be close to, I think he got the first down. Montrell Jones stretched it out there. Montrell's about six foot two or so, and he's a good man to throw for when you're going for the short yardage like that because he can stretch that body out and pick up another yard. You're right, and this is a pretty safe call by Tennessee. Throw it out to the wide receiver. It's a five-yard route. Let his athletic ability get the other two yards, and Jones is able to do that. Just take the football, get upfield. Good job by Jones of picking up the first down. Casey has one receiver set on the right side. He throws to that receiver. It's inside the 15 down to the 16-yard line. Leonard Scott, once again, is the man out there. You keep expecting Leonard to make one little juke move and be in the end zone because of his incredible speed. And it's going to happen sooner or later. Eventually, that will happen. And Tennessee is going to its quick game because Middle Tennessee State is putting eight men in the box. If you do that, in Tennessee's scheme, it forces them to go to their quick game, and those are those five-yard routes on the outside. Houston's got 20 yards on two carries. Davis has got four yards on uh, four carries for nine yards. <laughs> Cedric Houston back in at tailback and a short yardage gain for number 21. Let's go, keep playing, let's go! See, it's a very comfortable feeling for Will Woody McCorvey, the running back coach, to have this many guys to work with, and it appears so far there has been absolutely no problem, no jealousy, no questioning of anything. These young guys are just glad to get in there and get their hands on the football. Seven of nine there for Casey, having a great start here against Middle Tennessee. Back, fires it out here in the front to Cedric Houston. Fighting for yardage down to about the 10-yard line brings him down. Hit by fight. And Tennessee going with this perimeter game. A screen out to Houston. And middle plays this well. Three guys. Houston makes two miss. Just unbelievable ability at the tailback position from Cedric Houston. Crowd wants them to go for it. It's fourth down and one with the ball resting right on the 10-yard line. And... It appears that the team also wanted to go for it. And Philip Fulmer said, and Randy Sanders, okay. So here it comes. A, could be a big down for middle if they can hold. And it's a fake into the end zone. Beautiful fake. And then a touchdown pass to Jason Witten, the tight end. What a fake by Clawson and the running backs. A great job. They sold it all the way. And then Witten slipped out in the corner of the end zone. And the big tight end was home free. You're right. Middle Tennessee expecting Tennessee to pound it up the middle. They have both Lemming and Jabari Davis in the backfield. They're expecting them to pound it up the middle. And they do a good job of faking them. And he had Witten for the touchdown. Right, Newman's going to be up to kick now has a strained muscle, leg muscle, and so he is through for the day. Here's the kick that's up there, and it is good. And the Georgia Tech transfer comes through. You're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. Back here to Neyland Stadium as the camera pans the massive, massive football stadium and the sea of orange. Tennessee up 14 to nothing. Let's take a look, Terrence, at the touchdown again. A great call by Randy Sanders. Everyone thinking that Tennessee's going to run the football. Does a good job with the fake and hits Whitney in the end zone for the touchdown. Jabari carried out the fake so well that the half the middle team thought he had the football. And there's the tight end behind everybody. Take another look as Casey rolls from ground level. You've got to look at it. Just an all-around perfect play. Perfect execution. That's all you could say about that one. There is the offensive coordinator, Randy Sanders. And there's your scoring drive. 11 plays covered 53 yards. Consumed 546 on the clock. Capped with the pass from Clawson to Witten for 10 yards. 
And if you're Randy Sanders, you like the progress that your offense is making with Kelly Washington not playing in the first two ball games. Because when he comes back and you plug him in, you get these guys up to his level, and they're going to be unstoppable. So Newman will be kicking off once again to MTSU. We are near the end of the quarter. Five ticks on the clock before the end of the first quarter. Tennessee up 14 to nothing on the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. They opened by almost beating Alabama at Legion Field in Birmingham at a pass interception late in that ball game that really cost them. Tennessee opened with a convincing 47-7 victory over Wyoming played at the Coliseum in Nashville. Tennessee has an open date and then Florida Gators kept the down. We should, the kickoff we should remember that Alabama jumped out to a 22 to nothing lead on Middle Tennessee. Thought they had the game in hand, and Middle came back to make a game of it. You make a great point, Terrence. In fact, most everybody thought they would hold the tent at that time, and they did not. You're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. We get set to move to the second quarter of play to say Tennessee dominated the first quarter would be an understatement. The defense just stifled everything that Middle could come up with. The short pass, primarily the running of Dewan Hicks, just everything uh, that they could conceivably think of, and primarily was the Tennessee linebackers. Now let's give credit to the front also because they were disrupting everything giving the linebackers Terrence a free shot at the ball carrier you're right if your linebackers are good your defensive line is going to be good because they're keeping those guys off those guys feet and allowing them to make plays Andy McCollum is rallying his troops saying hey we've got a long football game ahead of us let's continue to do what we want to do well let's take a look at the first quarter stats Terrence and first downs middle got one that was on a penalty, Tennessee eight, and then the yards rushing. But the yards passing there is uh, the big factor for Tennessee. Clawson having a great, great first quarter, along with his receivers as well. And time of possession, uh, pretty even. But really, the dominating game, part of the game so far has been the Tennessee offensive line, giving Clawson all the time in the world to throw, and then his throws have been accurate. the second quarter of play. It's Hines got a keeper and it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good little call as he gets a yardage out across the 25 to about the 27 yard line. Back to covered eight yards. And Rico Hines, he's a good athlete. And they'll do a lot with him. Middle does a lot of misdirection and they'll run. I think he had 49 yards rushing against Alabama so they'll do this with him but I don't think he want to do it a lot versus Tennessee. Rico Hines looks like he's going to stand up in the shotgun. Now he walks up to the center. Now he steps back. He's apparently checking off his play here. Got two receivers set on each side. Takes it to, hands it off to Juwan Hicks. And Hicks gets across the 35 to the 36, maybe the 37-yard line. They like that little delay trap a lot, don't they? Yes, they do, but I think if you're middle, I think if you're going to run the football, I think you, you're going to have to pass the football some. Tennessee knows right now, middle Tennessee's not a threat to throw the football, so they're going to pack it inside. There's not going to be a lot there for Hicks. Juan Hicks, the tailback, got three receivers set on the left, one on the right, and then Hines goes, Enrico Hines goes into the shotgun. It'll be a first down and 10 situation. He's back. He's got a little time to throw. Fires downfield. It is incomplete out of bounds. Tennessee doing a good job defending that time. Really, somebody at the last second got a hand in the face of the quarterback and kind of, I think, altered that throw somewhat. I would agree. Middle going with a little the razzle-dazzle. He runs a little 10-yard stop-and-go route and Hines just throws it too far out of bounds. Youngster doesn't seem to be rattled, though. Hines standing in there. Juan Hicks lines up to his left. Tennessee jumps, and so did Middle. I think Middle's somebody on the left side of the line moved for Middle. It looked like Westbrook. And we'll get the call from the referee, Landis. For the snap. 
Movement by the offensive line. Five yard penalty. Still first down. It was Brandon Westbrook who made the false start. You made a good point last week against Alabama. Hines was really good in the comeback at Bama. And the thing that McCollum did with Hines early in his career is he took him on road trips to the big stadiums, to LSU, to some big stadiums, so that he would get a feel for what it's like to play in front of a big crowd to get him ready for this kind of atmosphere. Once again, they line up at the shotgun. And it's going to be a keeper this time. It's out across the 36 or 37 yard line, and there's a loose ball, and Tennessee thinks they have come up with it, and they have. Rashad Baker comes up with the football. And it was Rashad Moore who made the big hit on him. That was the thing that I mentioned about your quarterback running. They're not going to take care of the football, especially when they're running between the tackles. This way he's got it out, and Rashad Moore does a good job of knocking it loose the recovery by Baker. Rashad Moore, Rashad Baker. Doubling up on that one. Now Tennessee's offense goes to work in good field position. Plus a fake. Fun off of one man. Tries to get away. Still gets his pass off incredibly out in the flat. Not sure how he did that, but he did a little magic there. And finally, Troy Fleming saved him by being in the right spot. It was Lynch who had him wrapped up for middle, let him get away, and then got a second shot at him. I think he had him wrapped up twice, and Claus is showing some of that improvement that he made in the weight room in their all season. Able to just throw guys off. Showing some niftiness too, Bob. Good job by Claus and a finding Fleming, and a good job by Fleming of making something out of nothing. Right there is a case of Fleming showing what a veteran player can do to help his quarterback. Fleming came back said, hey, I'm over here. I'll help you out of this mess. And he did. It's second down and six. Lawson with a two receiver set left. He goes to the right. It's complete. Up to the 35, down to the 34-yard line goes Troy Fleming. So Fleming, for his good effort on the previous play, is rewarded with this one. Troy can do it all. He can catch coming out of the backfield. He is a tremendous blocker. He can play tailback for you. He's a very versatile guy. And Philip Fulmer feels like he's one of the best backs in the SEC for the reasons that you said he can do it all. And was a great tailback in high school. Probably, if you had to, would be a good linebacker. 29-yard line, the line of center. Doubling with the football, but still picking up very good yardage is Derek Tinsley. Tinsley has the potential to be the most exciting of the ball players because he's got great speed and great moves. Good blocking by Anthony Herrera. What a hole in Tinsley. Just keep your feet. I think he might have tripped over one of his own teammates there. One of the guys blocking for him. It might have been Herrera and kind of tripped over his foot. But he's uh, capable of big plays from anywhere on the field. You're going to see a lot of him this year. Here's Casey firing out the flat. It is incomplete. Intended for Tony Brown. Tennessee now leading 14 to nothing with 11.25 remaining in the first half of play. Glad you could join us wherever you're watching this game. We're happy to have you with us. It's a nice night in Knoxville. It's a little warm, but now the sun has gone down and there's a gentle breeze here in East Tennessee. And so the fans are really basking in great weather here. And off in the middle. Spinning inside the 20-yard line goes Cedric Houston down to about the 18-yard line before the Blue Raiders are able to bring him down. And I can't say enough about it, but just good blocking up front by the Tennessee offensive line. The linebacker's able to slide through there and make the play, but overall, Tennessee offensive line has just dominated the middle Tennessee defensive line in this ball game. Well, that's Munoz, Westbrook, Scott Wells, Anthony Herrera, Will Offenhusel, and we will see other guys in there. Probably a couple of true freshmen before the night's over. Douglas is a true freshman they have great plans for. Here's Clawson firing incomplete behind the intended receiver. 
it was Brown, Tony Brown, and Tony couldn't turn around and make the play. So that's one of the few not so good throws tonight by Clawson, but so many of them have been near perfect. You have to forgive him for that one. I think Clawson threw the ball the only place he could. Middle Tennessee comes up in man coverage, press coverage, and it's up to Tony Brown to get a good release and get downfield. It's just good coverage by Middle Tennessee State. They need four yards. They're not going to gamble as they did the last time on a fourth and one. They will, on fourth and four, attempt the field goal from the 25, making it a 35-yard effort by Newman. This kick is on the way. It's certainly long enough, and it is certainly good enough. So filling in for the injured Alex Walls. I tell you what, up until now we have seen the Tennessee kicking game in a now five quarters of play this year, and it has been absolutely, totally perfect. You're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. The leading 17 to nothing. We're still fairly early in the second quarter of play. 10 minutes, 14 seconds to go. And what depth does Tennessee have on this football team? They've lost Constantine Richmond. They've lost Kevin Burnett. They've lost Kelly Washington. They lose Alex Walls. And they plug all guys in and don't miss a beat. After a heartbreaker in Athens last Saturday, Clemson attempts to regain its winning ways on CSS this Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern. Louisiana Tech is in town, and we've got all the action right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. All right, back here in Knoxville on a nice September night, Tennessee Volunteers leading Middle Tennessee 17 to nothing game on this surface will be against Florida. Tennessee takes the week off after a couple of non-conference battles and then they go to war with their arch, arch rival, the Florida Gators. Newman handling the point after the field goals and the kickoffs now with the injury to Alex Walls. We are told that is a strain. We hope it's nothing more than that because Walls is a great part of this football program at Tennessee, Terrence. And he was four for four in the first game against Wyoming. So you'll want to get Alex Walls back. However, I think Newman is probably going to be your kickoff guy from here on out. And that is the reason why. Couple of yards deep into the end zone. And not much running room when he got out of there. Out to about the 10-yard line comes Richard Lee. And he is pretty well smothered under at that point. And under normal circumstances, you don't bring this ball out. But I think Lee is trying to give his team any kind of spark that he can. But Tennessee, as you've talked about, really playing well on special teams. They have a different attitude about special teams. Gabriel Wilson was the man. He's number eight. And remember, he had that bone charring hit earlier in this ball game. So he has come to play tonight, come to make an impression on his coaching staff in not very good field position. Hines stands up, wants the throw, got knocked down, and in the right spot was Keon Whiteside. In fact, it was a little bit beyond Keon, or he would have been in the end zone, probably. Tremendous. He had an interception in the Wyoming game, remember? And a good play by Keon Whiteside, but this ball's thrown behind the wide receiver. Hines has his wide receiver open down the middle of the field. Tennessee's playing too deep. I'll take that back. He's not open, but he still throws the ball behind. Good play by Whiteside. So it'll be second down and 10 to go now for the Blue Raiders. And Rico Hines, the quarterback, keeps a couple of backs in. So you expect a pass for those guys staying in for protection. And he is going to try to throw. Backing up. Gets it out in the flat. Wilson missed it. He gets up to the first down marker and beyond for a good play for Middle Tennessee. Richard Lee coming out of the backfield and is finally knocked down by Robert Peace, middle linebacker. A good call by Middle Tennessee, a little misdirection. They go with the screen to Lee, and this has a chance because Willie Miles bites, but the team speed of Tennessee just doesn't let this play develop. That's the one thing that Andy McCullough talked about. When you watch the film of Tennessee, the first thing you notice is speed. And there's some of it, too, as they throw it out on the flat intended for Ewell, David Ewell, and it's well covered by Tennessee. Again, their backs come up and react so quickly. 
I think the biggest improvement in the Tennessee team from a year ago has been their secondary play. I would agree, and I thought last year Richard Baker was the most improved player on the Tennessee defensive football team, and this year the secondary has a new attitude. They have a swagger about them, and they have confidence, and that's what you need in your secondary. They don't seem to be afraid to break on the ball this year. Here is Juan Hicks trying to get outside, bouncing and Finally, he is bounced out of bounds by Kevin Simon. And number five is all over the place for Tennessee tonight. Kevin Simon. Another Simon, California guy. And Simon says no to Middle Tennessee <laughs> State. Just a guy, when, they, when you talk about Kevin Simon, you talk to some of the players on the team, they say this guy is unbelievably fast for a linebacker. They say you can hear him breathing while he's out there. So that, that sounds like a raging bull, doesn't it? Sounds, Sounds a lot like Mike Singletary to play the Chicago Bears. Here's the fake handoff in the middle. They throw it out on the flat. And it's going to be well short of the first down, but it's a little bit of yardage to the 31-yard line. Calico made the catch, and Madre Dickerson made the stop. There's Calico's numbers. He's off to a pretty good start. Seven catches, 75 yards, averaging 10.7 per catch but couldn't get that one to the marker for a first down, so it'll be a punting situation, and Billings will have to come in to kick, and Baker will drop deep to receive for Tennessee. Bob Bell and Terrence Cleveland. All the gang will be here in Knoxville with Andy with us. The kick is a low liner, and it's taken by Baker. Maybe a returnable kick. Baker is still fighting for yardage up to the 40, and maybe a shade beyond before he is driven back. Covered 48 yards. Balls will take over first down and 10. There's Richard Baker, who's doubling. And actually, we may see him at times this year in a receiver role as well, Terrence. You're right. He's, he's a good enough athlete that you want to get the football in his hands. A great high school wide receiver. I think an All-American come out of high school and made the switch to safety when he came to Tennessee. Well, Tennessee fans were eager, eager to see a game tonight. Here's your official attendance, 107,672. And on the all-time kneeling list, that ranks number six. So you got to give a some credit, too, there to the MTSU folks. Uh, quite a few of those people have turned out tonight. If you want to keep up with what's going to be on CSS each day, then the place for you to go is the CSS website www.css-sports.com www.css-sports.com and you will find everything. The weekly schedule will be there. All the information about our network, CSS. It's your source for sports in the Southeast. 817 remaining before halftime. Both bands will be performing at halftime. We'll have a couple of special features and we hope to have the a word with the new president of the University of Tennessee that's the plan right now if you can find us here in the press box here's the give to the tailback straight ahead for two or three yards goes Cedric Houston <laughs> middle of the second line made the stop there for middle Tennessee there's Cedric who emerged really in the spring as number one and most of the spring and then into the early fall they had Davis and Houston as co number one but you always thought maybe because of speed factor a step faster that Houston really was number one and he has been so far. I would agree you would think they were leaning more toward Houston because he gives you a little more versatility at the tailback position. A lot of movement middle jump jump back then Tennessee may have moved question is who did it first? And the official will sort that out for us. Here's Steve Landis. Offside by the defense, five yard penalty, still second down. Middle jumped, couldn't get back in time. And Scott Wells wisely made the snap while that was going on. So a good move by the Tennessee center. Terrence. Really good move by Scott Wells and they practiced that during the week and he did a good job. Got you. 
second down and three for Tennessee. Casey Clawson, let's see if he stays on the ground here. He does. He gets it off to center. Houston. There's a big hole as he slides outside. Now a loose football, and Middle Tennessee has recovered it. So Houston coughed it up after a good move and a good little run. And the coaches will talk to him immediately on the sidelines because Tennessee really is not like those running backs mumbling. Take a look. Really there. And Houston, he's a, he's, a, he's a sophomore. But he'll have to learn that when you get in traffic, you put two hands on the football. He takes on a good shot with one hand on the football, and it's going to pop out every time. There he is looking at the jumbo trying to... It's still a fumble, Cedric, any way you look at it. It was Lynch, I think, who came up with the football for Middle Tennessee. So the Blue Raiders are in good field position now, trailing 17 to nothing. They fake it to Devon Hicks. They throw it long, and it's going to be almost intercepted. Breaking on the football beautifully was Jones, Mark Jones. Remember, we've got a Montrell and a Mark Jones. Montrell, a receiver. Here is a good move, though. Really played well by Mark Jones, but Reggie Jones was open for a long time. Hines should have got him the ball earlier, and they would have had a big play. But a good play by Mark Jones to back up safety. Mark Jones also will see from time to time this season returning punch as well. He will alternate some with Richard Baker in that area. Here's Hines getting a little pressure out of the pocket, running to the sideline, and finally running out of room. <laughs> Devin Simon once again. What's that? Maybe five tackles already by him tonight. My goodness. Sideline to sideline. Tell you, Tennessee has got a real thing going with the California connection right now. And they need to keep looking in that state because everybody they're getting out of there is turning out to be great football players. And I would agree with you. I've been really impressed with the way that Tennessee is able to recruit nationally and get kids to come from long distances here to play at the University of Tennessee. Three receivers set to the right. They flood this near side. And this is the way Hines is going, rolling to his right, firing short, and hit immediately. If Eddie Moore made the stop of Ewell. And Ewell is from Sevier County. He was a teammate of Joey Matthews that played here at Tennessee. So Ewell is playing in front, in front of some of his family, and he's, he's excited to be here. Ball is spotted right on the 49-yard line, so it is about a yard shy. Do you take a chance here, Terrence? If you're Andy McCollum and go for it, you're down 17 to nothing. You give Tennessee great field position if you don't make it, but you give your team a great lift if you do. I would agree. I think you go for it because I think Middle Tennessee needs something to get the momentum swing to swing their way. They need something positive. Well, they called a timeout to think about it. Maybe Andy McCollum had second thoughts on it because he has called his team to the sideline to talk to him. You are watching University of Tennessee football on CSF. Middle had called the timeout. Now they're back out on the field. they're still going to go for it. It's just complete confusion on the sidelines here on the Middle Tennessee sideline. They're trying to call another timeout. They have thrown a flag, and it may be on the bench. I'm not sure. Sideline warning on the visiting team. Number two. Second sideline warning in this ball game on Middle Tennessee. I don't think the players are at fault here. I think Middle Tennessee had about four coaches almost out to the hashes on that play. I would question whether you should go for it after all this confusion. But Middle Tennessee has made that decision. They may just try to draw Tennessee offside here. Everybody packed in tight. So it's probably a quarterback sneak, and it is. And it's going to be very close. But I think they might have it. The official 10 yards away from the pile is standing in a spot and pointing where it indicates they probably do have it by six inches or so. But they may have to measure. There was no question it was going to be a quarterback sneak because everybody was packed in right beside the quarterback. And they will bring the chains in. He will either have made it by six inches 
or missed it by a couple. He has it. First down. Middle Tennessee had enough surge up front to be able to pick up the first down. Let's look at the surge by Middle. Just big quarterback behind a big offensive line. Good play by Middle Tennessee State. They needed that. If you're middle, you want to get some points on the board here. Even if it's a field goal, take it in the halftime, and that's something that you can build on. So first down and 10 to go at the Tennessee 48-yard line. Only about the 47 and a half. Here is Hine throwing it up. Incomplete. He caught it, but was he in bounds? Yeah, they say he was. I want to see the replay on that. I thought he was out of bounds, but apparently he came up with a great catch. It was Richard Lee out of the backfield. Let's take another look. If so, he made a great athletic move right here. The official was right on top of it, so I assume he's right. Yeah, he did. He just got racked as he caught it, but he had those feet in. So Richard Lee made a very good athletic move. And Tennessee's defense makes a pretty good move right here as they jam up Dwan Hicks, Keon Whiteside leading the charge for the balls. The Alabama players and their coach Dennis Franchone said the one thing about Middle Tennessee is they kept fighting. That's the one thing they say about this football team is they will continue well, to fight. Here they are down 17 to nothing, but they're on the Tennessee 20-yard line and driving. Second down and eight. And for the most part, Tennessee's got their front line defensive people in there. The end zone really roaring, trying to make it difficult for Enrico Hines. He gives it off to, takes it to Duran Hicks and keeps it himself. Good call as he fooled the Tennessee defense and us and got it inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Richard Baker saved the touchdown. The Tennessee defense giving a lot of attention to Dewan Hicks, and they fake the inside give to him, and Hines does a good job there of giving Omari Hand the leg and taking it away. Good call by Middle Tennessee State. So it's first down and goal just inside the 10-yard line. They give it off this time to Dewan Hicks, and he drives are down to the one yard line before Kevin Simon made the stop along with Richard Baker. This Middle Tennessee team, as Terrence quickly pointed out, and rightly so, down 22 to nothing to Alabama, did not quit and almost won the football game. And they were down 17 to nothing here. Now they have roared down to within a yard of the goal line could make it a 17-7 ball game very quickly here. Crowd yelling for the Tennessee defense. The give in the middle, nothing. John and Tennessee comes up with a football. Boy, somebody made a stick in there. We'll check it on the replay. But the entire front line surged, and Richard Moore may have been the main man. Let's take a look. Moore wears number 58. A good stand by the Tennessee defensive line. I don't think Moore touches this. I think Hines may have bumped into his fullback. I think the fullback hit the ball. Yep, Moore was on top of it, but I think you're right. He just dropped it. You're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. Randy McCollum saw his team get within a yard of the end zone only to cough it up. And it was a good surge by Tennessee, but it was just a mistake by the quarterback. Here's Tennessee trying to drive in the middle with Jabari Davis, their big tailback, the big package. And he gets it across the five and out to the six-yard line. A little breathing room that time. Hey, hey. Tennessee goes with the heavy package with their backs <laughs> to the wall down here. Do they call that jumbo? <laughs> Why not? We're calling this game, Terrence. We can name that, okay? It'll be second down and seven. He got him three yards, driving straight ahead. Casey Clawson is going to throw with his back to the goal line, and he fires it complete out of the flat, surrounded by three Blue Raiders, and nowhere to go is Tony Brown, but Brown did pick up a first down before Sheldon Durham made the stop for Middle Tennessee. 
Good protection by the Tennessee offensive line. Allows Tony Brown. He runs a deep route, a deep comeback. Does a good job of pushing the DB down and coming back to the football. There's Coach Fulmer coaching on the sideline. Coach Fulmer saying everything was good, but that little dancing at the end, we don't like that. No dancing. Save that for after the game. <laughs> 2.54 remaining in the first half of play. Tennessee up 17 to nothing. Here's a whistle stopping the play. Flag has been dropped on the green grass of Neyland Stadium. Over 107,000 in here. Middle is saying it's against Tennessee, and I think the official will agree first with half. it. Movement by the offensive line. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. A little bit unusual. A veteran offensive line. And they made a little bit of a mistake there, and it cost them. And here's the fumble by Houston. Middle taking advantage of an opportunity, but they, they miss out, Bob, with the fumble of their own. Down and Andy McCullough said, the one thing we can't do or the one thing we have to do is limit the mistakes we make if we don't have opportunity to beat Tennessee. Jafari up across the 35 to the 36. The train was on track there. <laughs> the J train on the roll. The J train moves the chains. And it comes with the clock showing 222 remaining. Clock stopped for the first down. Just when you start to brag about Cedric, Cedric Houston, Jabari Davis says, hey, don't forget about me. <laughs> well, it's a great one-two punch. Whichever guy is back there. Here's Colton, all the time in the world. Now he's got a run, a slide, a fall, and dropped the football, and recovered by MTSU. Just simply let the ball fly out of his hands. No one hit him. He was sliding and just turned it loose. Clausen makes a mistake. Good protection by Tennessee. He has all day. Good coverage by Middle Tennessee, and Clausen just let the ball slip. You need to tuck it. When you decide as a quarterback that you're going to run, tuck the football. He still has it out. Tuck the football. It's a hot night, and the ball is obviously with the perspiration a little bit slippery. And he is not accustomed to running with the football. And big mistake. So Middle gets it back in good field position in Tennessee territory. And Rico Hines with time throws it out to a safety valve. And nothing doing Kevin Simon all over Tyrone Calico he wanted to go down the sidelines on a deep route everybody covered by the UT secondary so it really turns out to be a minus three yard situation you're right really good coverage that's some of their little razzle dazzle one as you said wanted to go downfield not there takes his dump off 128 with the clock running middle has very little choice now except to put the ball in the air with the clock ticking down and then uh, midfield, he fires, it's incomplete. Calico was the intended receiver right in front of the middle bench. Did you want to take a guess as to who was covering him? How about Kevin Simon, huh? Simon's all over the field and also good coverage by Jabari Greer. Just blanketed Tyrone Calico. Jabari is number 33 as you watch the game, folks, and he is considered one of the uh, better cornerbacks now in America. He's got good speed. He had a great spring and a great ball practice and is having a great year. There he is. Enrico Hines decides to call a timeout with a minute 16 to go in the first half of play. Middle trailing 17 to nothing. Remember they got down to the one yard line and then Enrico Hines fumbled the football. Tennessee came out of there with it and then they fumbled it away with as twice tonight Tennessee's coughed it up once by Cedric Houston and the last time by Casey Clawson. So that'll be the subject of some hot talk on Monday in the film room. Tomorrow night, tune in to CSS for the re-air of the Vanderbilt Commodores and the Furman Paladins. Game time is 8 o'clock Eastern right here on CSS. It is your source for sports in the Southeast.
Tennessee leading 17 to nothing. Middle with the football and throwing from the 49-yard line of the balls, trying to get something on the board. They went for it on a fourth down earlier and on a quarterback sneak, got it, but couldn't get down and cross the goal line because they finally were stymied by the Tennessee defense. Tennessee defense has been on the field quite a bit tonight and played very, very well. Bellaby over the ball at center for the Blue Raiders. Keeps a couple of backs in to block. Got plenty of time. Now it's breaking down. He has to run with it. He fires out here to Lee, and Lee is out of bounds. Calico it is. Correction, Calico is out of bounds and stops the clock with a minute and four to go. 14 yards and a first down. This is also when Middle Tennessee is dangerous. It's when plays break down, but Hines is still able to make a play when there's no play there. Enrico Hines goes into the shotgun and will try to throw the football, moving to his left. Now, he fires out of desperation, and they got a man down there, and he is out of bounds. This time, Calico caught it, but he did go out of bounds. There wasn't any question about that one. And a good play by Hines. His primary secondary receiver not there. He's just playing backyard, and Calico just not able to get both feet in bounds. This is really close. The left foot, oh, that may have been good. <laughs> that foot was dragging. I think we have a red flag if they're in the NFL right now on the field, but we're not. Tennessee may have gotten away with one there. One foot was in, and as he was falling, the other foot was dragging, and of course they see that here on the Jumbotron. Enrico Hines, numbers 9 of 16, 68 yards. Look on him as he didn't throw that well deep, but he's thrown a couple here pretty nice tonight, uh, Terrence. He has, and he, he does a good job. He's a good enough athlete that when things break down, he can get out and make some plays. All right, there's the left foot down. Right foot down. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good to me. But the official was within five yards of him, and he said no. So officially, it is out of bounds. 48 seconds to go. Enrico Hines. That's the throw. Waited too long. Got smothered by Julian Battle on a safety blitz. Julian Battle coming up from his safety position with good speed, nailed him. John Chavis taking a chance here. He brings Battle on a strong safety blitz, and Lee just has a whiff block. He doesn't even give it a chance, and Hines doesn't have an opportunity to get the ball downfield. Lost 10 yards, make it second down and 17. That stops the clock now with 25 seconds to go, and... What is this for middle? This is about their 12th time out of this half, it seems <laughs> like, isn't it? Remember, they had that whole series they were calling over there in the, uh, in the first half when they were trying to decide whether to go for it. They've had a number of powwows. Let's say they're around the 50 yard line. Yeah. Every Friday night, CSS has live high school football from across the region. This is your chance to see the stars of tomorrow before they move on to the college ranks. This week we come to you from Atlanta with the Parkview High School and Brookwood High game. Game time is 7.30 Eastern right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. All right, 17 to nothing, Tennessee. Middle has had the ball an awful lot here in the last six or seven minutes of this quarter. Got down to the one-yard line before coughing it up, unable to get in for a score down there. And so Tennessee finally did him a favor and turned it over when Lawson fumbled and given him a chance here, given him a chance to get on the board in the second half. The Tennessee's defense has played very well. They put pressure on him. He rolled left, 
and fires. He is out of bounds with the catch just beyond the marker. David Ewell gets a first down. A good job, and this is their sprint pass. They know Tennessee pressure. They're going to bring secondary pressure on the blitz. Hines does a good job of rolling out, and Ewell does a good job of catching the ball and get out of bounds. So, still got 18 seconds. Still time for several plays. Pass plays. And Middle just refuses to give up as they drive on Tennessee's defense. Through the air. And Tennessee knows they're going to throw. Here is Hines rolling right, rolling away from the pressure as much as he can, running out of room, though, and finally just runs out of bounds to stop the clock. Omari well, Hand was pressuring him. There's Coach Philip Fulmer on the sidelines, watching the clock, watching his defense. 12 seconds to go. Only four seconds ticked off the clock, but that play seemed like it took an eternity. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I think if you're Middle Tennessee, you have one more play here, and then I think you bring your field goal team on, and you want to get some points on the board going in at halftime. Yeah, you don't want to walk away with absolutely nothing. There's uh, Enrico Hines' number. Then it's the full house backfield for protection. Again, he got a little pressure. Got away from one, got away from another. Still fighting for yardage, and gotten into good field goal range with one second to go. Now, no time on the clock. They did not get the timeout called. That run cost them at least three points. That and then the miscommunication that they had early in the fourth quarter using a timeout when they didn't have to. That was uh, a little bit of mismanagement problem right there, Terrence. Tennessee leads at halftime by a score of 17 to nothing. Are watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. Uh, obviously, is doing a good job at putting together some talented players at middle. Middle Tennessee is now second only to the University of Tennessee as far as size is concerned. They're up to 21,000 students. Kick deep in the end zone. Tennessee brings it out of there. Still running with the football, heading for the sidelines and going out of bounds. Tell you what, it was just. Larkins just a step away from making the turn upfield, but he was heading full steam to the sidelines and couldn't turn it upfield, but a great, great return. Not real happy about how he got shoved out of bounds, but Corey Larkins had a 70-yard return last week against Wyoming, and the Tennessee coaching staff said they really liked the way he set up the return, setting up the wedge and getting outside. And Leonard Scott better watch out. I think Tennessee's found a return guy in the kickoff return department. It was a little strong all the way into the water bottles, but uh, no flag and probably none deserved. Lawson still operating at quarterback, of course, all the way. Hands off to his tailback, and there's not much there. They drive him back two or three yards. Troy Fleming. Fleming got hit at the line of scrimmage by virtually everybody on the line of scrimmage, so... Little waiting for that one all the way. Hard to figure out exactly what they will start to do here in the second half. Will they work on their running game? Will they work on the passing game? Both of their games they have opened, Wyoming game and this one working on the passing game, but then have gone for running. This time they opened the second half running the football and really picking up only about three yards. Second down and seven. Ball resting right at the 40 of Tennessee. Here's Lawson firing out the front. It's the Brown. Brown is coming downfield, and he's got the first down and a lot more as he gets in the middle territory to the 43-yard line. Randy Arnold made the stop. Can't you see Tony Brown gaining confidence? Does a good job of catching the football and getting upfield. I tell you, he's going to be exciting. The more you get the football in this kid's hands, the more he plays, he's going to be exciting. Well, there you see the receiver work today and the production of the receivers. And Tony Brown, the most productive from the number of catches. And he led Tennessee last week with the number of catches. So, Well, they've spread it out, too, Terrence. Six guys there. Here's Clawson getting away from one man, still fighting. Now throws out to the safety valve, and a 
it's a good safety valve. Down the sideline, all the way to the 15-yard line goes Derek Tinsley. He looked downfield. He wanted the deep throw. No one was open. He kept moving. He did a nice job in avoiding the uh, tackle. He did. Middle Tennessee comes with the secondary blitz. Clausen does a good job of avoiding it. Buying time. Finds Tinsley out on the sideline. He makes a good play. I tell you, I'm impressed with Clausen's presence in the pocket. Primary not there. Avoids the rush. Looking for his secondary. Knows Tinsley, Tinsley's out on the outside and makes a good throw. I think we'll see number 81 downfield. He was out of the picture there, but he was downfield. Brown throwing a block. This time, two receivers set to the right, and they throw to the left, and it's there, and it's out of bounds. At the three. Intended for Tony Brown, a little bit behind him. <laughs> and Tony Brown normally makes the difficult catch, and this is a good call by Tennessee and a good call by Casey Clawson. He throws this at the back shoulder of the defender, and only Tony Brown knows it's there. But he can't make the catch. No chance for an interception by middle, which is a good, uh, good call. This time they set two receivers on each side. And Clawson's going to work out of the shotgun. Fires quick. And fires to his tight end, who's hit at the 10-yard line. It's going to cover about five yards. Jason Whitten. They go with four wides, and Witten just runs a little option route, sits down, and he's a load. It takes the whole Middle Tennessee defense to bring him down, and a late shot there by Offenhusel. And it's going to go against Tennessee. I may have set the five-yard line, but it's the 10-yard line, of course, but it's going to be a personal foul penalty, I guess, Terrence, against the Tennessee Vols. And Philip Fulmer upset. Offenhusel's a senior, and he's a captain. After the play was over, there was a personal foul against the offense 15-yard penalty it'll be third down Ooh. Philip uh, will have some things to say about that you can see him steaming a little bit there <laughs> huh? Ooh. as I said often using Alpha Hughes is one of the three captains he's a senior he's supposed to set the example just a bad decision on his part so it pulls it all the way back to the 25-yard line from the 10-yard line where that play had wound up the last time. Now, Clawson, remember the last time he fumbled, but this time he tucks it in and keeps a possession of the football after a short game down to the 20-yard line. He is hit by Johnson. Thomas Johnson made the stop for the Blue Raiders. Good shot of Clawson, a little bit disheveled right there. <laughs> I tell you, the Tennessee coaches have to hold their breath every time he tucks that football and starts to run downfield. He's a gutsy kid. He's not going to go down. Well, there are the numbers for the ground game. Tennessee backs, including the uh, quarterback. But it bogs down, and they have to go for the field goal from the 27-yard line, 37-yard effort, and it is no good. It's no good. So, first miss of the season for Tennessee field goal kickers. And, of course, Walls is out and Newman handling that chore right now. You are watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. First miss for Tennessee, which was actually about a 37-yard effort. And Newman just kind of pulled it a little bit. I tell you, Tennessee played impressive in the first quarter. And second quarter in the beginning of the early third quarter they just aren't playing Tennessee football they look a little sloppy out of sync still leading 17 to nothing defense doing their job at the offense they make the big plays they start moving downfield all of a sudden it just fizzles out jumping around on defense trying to disguise it they are middle here is the quarterback getting out of one bit of trouble still fighting for his life and finally is dropped at about the 20 yard line by Keon Whiteside. Hines is a big kid he's listed at 212 I think he's a little bigger than that 
he's able to shake Ed Kendrick off and does a good job of avoiding Amari, Amari Hand, and Whiteside able to get him down finally. So it's second down, actually about 11 yards to go for a first now. And Enrico Hines will go into a shotgun formation. Two receivers set on each side. Drops, fires quickly, and completes his pass and drops immediately at the 26-yard line. Tennessee covers that one quite well. It was Kerry Wright, and he was hit by Jabari Greer. Middle goes with that quick, quick, their quick throw, as you said. Hines takes a shot on this from Tennessee, but still able to stand in and deliver the throw. Makes it a third down and about two. So it's a big down for the middle offense right here and for the Tennessee defense. They get a first down, it'll give them a real shot in the arm as they play here in the third quarter, having been unable to get on the scoreboard. They're trying to get something positive happening. Tennessee's defense not moving around any, just stationary and making the play beautiful. Tennessee just read it and flowed with it. Made the stop, it was Julian Battle hitting Galloway. Julian Battle has had a couple of big defensive hits tonight. I tell you, Julian Battle's a strong safety, but he's almost like a linebacker. Nothing there. Just a form tackle, a textbook tackle by Julian Battle. Eddie Moore also number 37 in on it. So that brings up a fourth down situation for Middle Tennessee, and they will send Billings back into punt formation, and Rashad Baker will drop to receive for Tennessee. The kick is away, and this one is a gorgeous kick. Baker recruiting. Now, looking for some running room. Dancing around and picks up five or six yards when he probably should have been hit in his tracks. Sheldon Durham made the stop. So Tennessee's offense takes over now, and as Terrence correctly pointed out, they've been sputtering. 47-yard kick with a seven-yard return. Consistency, I guess, is the word we're looking for here, and they haven't had that since the first quarter. I would agree with you, and I think Tennessee is at their best when they're running the football well. I think they're able to open up their offense, and then they're able to throw really well. They start to bring in the three wide and the four wide, and, and things just start to click for them. They ran the football well in spurts, but then they haven't, and on some occasions had the turnovers, just haven't been able to put it all together in this football game. You're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. All right, back here at Neyland Stadium. Ball on the 26-yard line of the Volunteers. They're in possession. First and 10. We've got nine minutes to go in this quarter. Nine minutes, eight seconds to be precise. Florida will come to town having been embarrassed by Miami. Miami 41 to 16 over the Gators. So Ron Zook. Ooh. If you like to hear the talk shows in Florida this week. Wow. Everybody jumped. Tennessee jumped. MTSU did. The question is who did it first? There's Big Herrera. He's filling out that jersey, isn't he? <laughs> and he's smiling. Movement by the offensive line. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Might have been Anthony who jumped, but anyway, it's five yards against Tennessee, and that's another sign that Tennessee is not quite in sync. Against Wyoming, they had virtually a penalty-free situation. Made hardly maybe one or two little minor mistakes all night. Yeah, we talked about that they should play. They needed to play fundamentally sound in the first ball game, and they did. But in this ball game, they regressed. Remember that personal foul penalty pushed them back. Might have cost them a touchdown. It probably did cost them at least three because they wound up with the field goal. Here's the pass in the flat and out on the sidelines with the ball is Jabari Davis out of bounds. But that's a pretty good yardage. Covered about ten, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and looking downfield decides to go out to the just the flair to Jabari Davis and Jabari Davis when you look at him he moves kind of slow but he's a kid once he starts running downfield he's got some speed remember they had the five yard penalty he did pick up 10 but you still got about oh, 
Just a shade over five yards to go to get to the first down marker. So it's second down, call it six. Tennessee up 17 to nothing, but frankly, their offense has been fizzling since the first quarter. Here's Clawson, a throwback. And MTSU he read it beautifully. Nowhere to go that time for Tony Brown. He's hit by Danley. Curtis Danley, among others, actually lost a yard. Demetrius Walker plays this really well. He reads it. I think he reads it because of the Tennessee offensive line. They set and take off, and he reads it. Good play by Middle Tennessee defense. Now, Tennessee's facing a third down and seven. There's Randy Sanders, the Tennessee offensive coordinator. Let's see what he has called for Casey Clawson here. Two receivers right, one left. Two backs stay in. Clawson fires complete. It should be enough for a first down by about a half a yard or a yard. Montrell Jones actually had it pretty comfortably and then kind of turned around and almost lost that first down. A good protection, good throw by Clausen, good catch by Montrell Jones, but you're right. You want to protect this football. Just good protection there. Good protection by Herrera on the right side. Good catch by Jones, but protect this football. The defenders are coming. You have it hanging out like a loaf of bread. Don't need another turnover. First down and 10 to go for Tennessee. 7.48 remaining. Quarter number three. Balls up 17 to zip. Javari up across the line of scrimmage and up across the 45 to the 46-yard line before he is driven to the natural turf here at Neyland Stadium. The turf here is so good that it looks artificial from up here. Doesn't it? <laughs> That's how good the surface is. I made the comment when I first walked in. I said, isn't the field beautiful? Yes. Just unbelievable. Done a good job on the field. Tennessee now will be looking at second down and four. Davis has got seven carries for 39 yards. Well, Jones goes in motion, and they hand it off to the tailback. Still on his feet. Down the sideline goes Frederick Houston, breaking a tackle, and that's what you like to see from a big tailback when they got the leg power, the power from the waist down to break tackles like that. 15 yards. And Middle Tennessee has eight men in the box. They're expecting to run, and they play this well. You have to make that tackle. It's not going to be easy to bring down Houston. Good play by Cedric Houston. Penetration by Middle. He bounces it outside. Mm, they need that tackle. He shakes it off. First down, Tennessee. Cedric Houston displaying plenty of power on that run. Backfield. Jones goes in motion. One receiver set on the left and they pitch it back to the tailback. Houston gets to the corner, turns the corner, gets enough for a first down before he hits the sidelines. See, he turns that corner. It's kind of deceptive. It looks like he's gliding, but actually he has to be flying. Uh, Terrence or middle with some pretty good speed themselves would catch him, but really deceptive speed i think a little bit of both and as i talked about tennessee is best when they can run the football and i think they decided hey our streak right now without kelly washington is to run the football so that's what we're going to do yeah they may be kind of pulling in the passing game for the run right here Andy McCullum and his staff trying to set some sort of defense against it. And talking with his team on the sidelines. Tennessee leading 17 to nothing and driving with the football. Both uh, had some mistakes in the first half and it's really that second quarter and beginning of this quarter sort of sputtering football. You are watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. Andy McCullum's team surrounding him and some of his offensive staff there as they, or defensive staff, as they try to figure out how to stop the ball's running game right now. Tennessee has moved the ball effectively passing, but they have fizzled several times when they got in the scoring range. So now they have decided, I guess, Terrence, like you said, to just stick it to the ground and see what happens there. And with the running of Cedric Houston and Jabari Davis, the uh, 
they're pretty effective, as we see right here. I think in these first two ball games, Tennessee's trying to develop their personality as an offense, and I think they're finding out early that we're going to have to be able to run the football, so let's go ahead and start to do that. All right, we'll see what the balls. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator and play caller, has in mind here. After the timeout, Tennessee breaks the huddle with the clock showing 6.39 remaining in this third quarter. In the eye backfield. Houston eight carries for 59 yards on the night now. They go back to their pass and it's open. In the flat. Down the sideline. All the way down to the five-yard line goes Montrell Jones. mentioned early in the first half that all you need is a little wiggle from the wide receiver on that and it, they could take it the distance. Middle Tennessee putting eight men in the box as we said forces Tennessee to go with the quick game and this is a great play by Montreal Jones. They a good say he stepped out of bounds right there on about well it's the eight yard line. It's one on one there. A good move and a good pickup by Montreal Jones. So it's first and goal at the eight yard line for Tennessee. Trying to get some points on the board, which they haven't been able to do in the last couple of quarters. Here's the handoff in the middle to Cedric Houston. He got to the five and maybe to the four before he is driven back. Pretty solid hitting in there by Middle Tennessee, but a little bit of daylight on the initial crack in the line. It was Randy Arnold, the middle linebacker, primarily responsible. He got four yards, second and four. Ball at the second and goal, actually, with the ball at the four-yard line. And a good surge up front by the Tennessee offensive line and good blocking by the fullback, Jabari Davis. Vanderpool also in on the tugging there. Do you play power football here? Do you use a fade route? Do you play power football? And the flag goes right into the middle of things, thrown in the MTSU secondary. We could have holding. MTSU players applauding as if they expect that and that's going to be the call. So again Tennessee makes a big mistake. The last time they were down here they had a personal foul penalty of 15 yards against them. And here they are down in this range again and they make another mistake. And Philip Fuma wants to be able to punch this football in with his running game with his power set. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it against Middle Tennessee. The last time that they scored, they had to do a little Holding. misdirection and throw the win. The offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. So it's another costly penalty, and it pulls the ball all the way back out to the 14-yard line. And remember, they were on the four and knocking on the door. Boston is actually 20 of 24 for 221 yards, so 83 percent if you want to figure that. But in each case, something has happened at the end of these, or before they reach actually the end zone to stop these drives. Here he throws again. This one is right in the hands of the receiver, Jabari Davis, but he couldn't hang on to it. Jabari was looking downfield before he brought the ball in. And you catch this pass so much in practice, you think, oh, no problem. And the, the time that you start to look downfield before you look the football in is the time that you'll drop it. So Tennessee now is facing a third and 14. It's actually third and goal is what it amounts to at the 14-yard line. Spread the field with two receivers to the left, one to the right, but they do keep a couple of backs in, as you see, for protection. So you know Clawson's going to the air with 14 yards needed for a touchdown. Timeout, Middle Tennessee, number two. And Andy McCollum is, he is furious. He either didn't want the timeout or he didn't want the defense that they had set. But whatever it was, he is not a happy person right now. And he's letting everybody know about it. So it stops the clock at 5.20, remaining in the third quarter. Crowd all remaining in their seats here tonight. This game is not over, and it's still in doubt. Tennessee leading 17 to nothing, but they have really fizzled with their offense 
in the past couple of quarters. Email us at CSF schedule. How's that for service? Here's the address. Well, there's a couple, one wearing orange, one wearing blue. CSU. It's uh, nice looking, happy fans in the yeah. stands. This drive has the ball, this uh, time consumed on this drive, nine minutes, and nothing has happened. <laughs> Boy, if you keep the ball for nine minutes and don't score, then that doesn't speak well. This drive's actually nine minutes, eight seconds old. And it's still going. Third and 14. We've either got to score a touchdown or go for a field goal, and it's going to be a long one. He has a big dump there by Brandon Lynch of the quarterback, Casey Clawson. Casey held it a little too long, and the defense got through. Middle Tennessee comes with a blitz, and it just gets to Clawson. Had great protection all through this ball game. This time, they're able to get to him. So they're going to attempt a field goal from the 32, making it a 42-yard effort. Newman missed the last attempt. He is substituting for Alex Walls, who pulled a muscle tonight. This one is blocked. And rolling down to about the 16-yard line. So Tennessee continues to Part of the credit has to go to MTSU for playing pretty good solid defense, but also Tennessee's offense has just really began to unravel here. I'm trying to see where the block came from. I just think the kick came out low. I thought maybe someone from Middle Tennessee jumped really high, but I just think the kick came out low. Native's a little restless right now. 17 to nothing in favor of Tennessee, but they have done nothing since the first quarter significant in the way of a drive. They have had good plays, but they have all the drives have bogged down. Last five carries, minus two, minus ten, zero, nine, and minus two. Nine plus in there is about the only positive thing that happened. Now, as long as they hang around, Middle Tennessee is going to gain a little more confidence, Terrence. You're right, and against Alabama in the second half, they had three drives of 75 yards or more. So they're capable of putting something together offense. And there's your answer right there. They put something big time together all the way up across the 45, 46, 47 yard line. Running with the ball is Enrico Hines, the quarterback. Take a look. It's a quarterback draw. Good blocking up the middle. Good block there on Simon, and he does a good job of running straight up the field. 24 yards. That's the second good run he's run out of that draw tonight. Good block there by Jonathan Proby. Allows him to burst up the middle for a good game. Another good game right down the middle. Down across the 45 to the 43-yard line goes Juan Hicks. So Tennessee has let Middle get back into this by fizzling out on a number of offensive drives and giving Middle a little more spirit. Nine yards on that carry. Second and one. Ball on the Tennessee 43. In the shotgun. Give is to the second man through, and he's got the first down. That's Lee, Richard Lee. And he picks up the first down, so Middle continues to move the chains. They're moving it on Tennessee's basically first-team defense. Demetri Field made the stop. Defensive tackle. Two receivers at the bottom of your screen, one at the top. And in the shotgun goes Enrico Hines of the Blue Raiders. Fakes it to Dwan Hicks, rolls to the left, keeps it, and got hit. Pretty good play that time by Tennessee's Willie Miles. Willie strung it out and would not let him get to the corner and turn the corner. 
as you said, a really good play by Willie Miles. They roll Hines out, and Miles is responsible for coverage as well as contain on the quarterback. Just does an outstanding job. Got three on its second down and seven. With the ball at the 37-yard line of the balls. Hines looks to be checking off. Now backs up into the shotgun. Got two receivers at the top of the screen. Hands it to his tailback, and there's nothing doing. Tennessee's defense stood Juan Hicks up that time. Would not let him get outside. Omari Hand leading the way along with Keon Whiteside, number 50. Middle Tennessee gives a little inside give out of the shotgun to Dewan Hickson. Calico's coming on the reverse. I wouldn't be surprised to see Middle Tennessee run a reverse after that, off of that same play sometime soon. Third down and nine with a loss of two yards. Third and nine. Got a spread formation. Two receivers, top of your screen, two at the bottom. Now one comes in, checks to see if there was a check off. Hines keeps it, still fighting, and Tennessee finally brings it down. He picked up some positive yardage, but not near enough for a first down. Julian Battle from safety made the stop after a three-yard gain. Probably should have been hit for a loss. I think Middle Tennessee wanted to run the option there. Tennessee played it really well, and he, tried, he starts to add lift. I'm not sure the receivers at the top of the screen when we lined up that time really knew what the play was. I think they were a little confused and missed the checkoff. Middle is going to go for it on fourth and six. Somewhat of a gamble, but they're down 17 to nothing, and we're getting late in the third quarter. Why not? Tennessee brings up a safety. They make the blitz. They throw out in the flat, broken up. They're going to call pass interference on Tennessee. Willie Miles is probably going to be tagged with pass interference. He reached over the shoulder, and in doing so, he may have made contact. If he made contact, it's with his right hand. I think his left hand was free and a good play. We'll take a look pass at it. Interference by the defense. The penalty was less than 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, therefore. That was a bad call. That was a clean, a clean play. Automatic first down. That was a terrible call. He did not have the hand on the back, and he reached around with the left hand and knocked it free. This may be a makeup call for the bad one. Middle got it Alabama. Remember that horrible call down there. But that was uh, one of the uh, referees missed. Willie Miles actually made a great play. Here's the handoff to Dewan Hicks. He's through the line for about three before he is dropped. Let's take another look at it, and you be the judge. I can't see if Willie Miles has a hand on him. He doesn't when the ball is there. His I right hand is actually out behind himself. It's not even... I think it's a close call. I don't think it's pass interference. I think he has his right hand up, trying to get around the receiver to bat the ball down with the left hand. Yeah, I think he made just a very good clean play. But the official didn't see it the same way we did, did he? He didn't have the benefit of instant replay, though. We'll say that point. Here's the snap to the shotgun formation and a long pass down there, incomplete. And this time, they're good. It was almost collision that time. Willie Miles was there. Calico was the intended receiver. There was more pass interference on that one than there was on the other one. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> Calico has Miles beat. If Hines throws this ball out more toward the back of the end zone, that's a touchdown. Uh, <laughs> so Tennessee got kind of done over with the last call. Middle kind of got done over with that no call, I think. That's the end of the quarter. So three quarters have gone by here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, and that's the result of it. Tennessee 17 and Middle Tennessee nothing. One more. We've got another 15 minutes of football, and Tennessee's a combination of two things has happened here. Tennessee's offense has really fizzled. 
in the last uh, two quarters of play, especially last two and a half quarters. And Middle Tennessee's defense is playing very good football. They're hanging tough. They're bending, but they're not breaking. And Tennessee's helping them with some silly penalties like motion penalties of personal foul and so forth. And they both have coughed it up too many times tonight. But we've still got another 15 minutes of football to go here. And as we talked about Middle Tennessee State continuing to fight. You've got to give them credit. They will not quit. They've got some talented athletes on this team. They still... I would give them a very good chance against Kentucky and Vanderbilt. In fact, I would think they'd be favored against Vanderbilt right now without question. And both those teams. Next year, they add Georgia and Clemson to their schedule. Like Tennessee just blew that thing up wide open. It is Robert Peace, number 41, the middle linebacker. There he is, young man from Louisiana, junior at Tennessee, and it's a minus three yards. Your third quarter stats through three. Tennessee with the edge in first downs and rushing, and also in passing, and then total yardage, a pretty big edge. Time of possession also in Tennessee's favor, but that doesn't equate to what they should have on the scoreboard. Brian Kelly. Field goal, and it is up there, and it's good. What is that, 30, 40 yards? So Brian Kelly puts middle on the board. They've been hanging around all night, Terrence take a chance on that when they had to get some points on the board and so they finally get three up there we've got a football game ladies and gentlemen you're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS well the score came by middle in the first minute of the fourth quarter of play so we still got 14 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in this contest as Kelly tacks three on and it's a 17 to 3 ball game you can see the determination in the Middle Tennessee players. They think they've still got a chance, and they do. You're Unless right. Tennessee really gets a little more consistent on offense. You're right, because in the game against Alabama in the fourth quarter, they had one drive of nine plays, 75 yards for a touchdown, another drive of seven plays, 80 yards for a touchdown, another drive of two yards and 40, uh, two plays, 42 yards in a touchdown. So they play good football in the fourth quarter. There it is. Tennessee, of course, exploded early, and quite frankly, it looked like it might be a pretty easy night work for Tennessee the way it started, and maybe they thought that way, and then they kind of pulled it in, and they haven't scored in the second half. Here's the kickoff, and it's a pretty good result. Drop picked up. Now out to the 20. Yard line, 25 yards on the carry is Corey Larkins. Corey Larkins is gonna break one up soon, isn't he? He Terrence? is exciting. If he can get this corrected, you got to watch the football in. But once he has it, does a good job of continuing to set up the wedge and just nifty, really good job of running with the football. I like him back at the Tennessee return spot. Going to be nailed with it. yet another penalty. Holy receiving team 10 yard penalty first down Tennessee beginning to rack up a lot of yardage here that they don't want and that's penalty yardage there's the middle Tennessee scoring drive 10 plays covered 47 yards took five minutes and seven seconds off the clock and Kelly's field goal officially goes down his 45 yards so Tennessee's offense now has got the burden here to try to do something positive and get the team out of the hole. And that's the one way to start it right there with a pass to Tony Brown. And Brown picks up good yardage, enough for a first down. 11 yards to be exact. So Tennessee, let's see if they get in sync here. Their head is in this ball game right here. And 
middle, of course, will try to dig in and do the best they can. But I think Tennessee's probably going on a little bit of a throwing bench right here, Terrence, wouldn't you think? I think so. And they're rolling Casey Clausen out on their last possession. Middle Tennessee was able to get pressure on Clausen, so they're going to roll him out of the pocket. Well, as we said, they would throw. They ran the football. Cedric Houston, and he only got two yards. Second down and eight. Randy Sanders probably has the idea of mixing it up here, but I'm not sure they're going to grind it out on this defense right now on the ground. Tennessee's last possession, as you said, well over nine minutes. They'd like to have that type of drive here and put it in the end zone. Throw in the flat. That's a running roll. Got a first down is Leonard Scott. Leonard Scott turning on the burners once he got that football and got the first down. He got nine yards. So Tennessee has come up with two first downs here. And I thought this, this drive. I thought this play had a chance to go to distance, but a good job of Will Martin running Leonard Scott down from behind. Yes, it was. And keep in mind, Leonard is a world-class track guy. Lawson sets a man in the slot on the right. It comes in motion. Now receiver on the left. Rolls pitches back. They're going to try to run the football, and they do find a little daylight with Cedric Houston. And Cedric gets down to about, gets up to about the 47-yard line. Maybe they now are closer to the 46. Here's the pitch. Take a look, Terrence. And Tennessee goes with the sweep. Houston trying to stretch it wide and find the cutback lane. And Tennessee shoots itself in the foot with another penalty. Houston trying to stretch it and find the cutback lane. Middles playing it very well. Another holding penalty. Well, there it is. Middle has been penalized twice for 10 yards. Tennessee nine times for 77 yards. I tell you, Philip Fulmer's happy that they have an open date between this game and the game against Florida. They have time to correct some of these mistakes they're making. Well, they're making enough to keep the film room busy for a few days. Now Tennessee's looking at a first and 19. Got a little of it back here on the pass to Tony Brown, but a long ways from the first down. Got seven yards. Brown seems to be a little hobbled on, on the... Uh, yeah, he's slipping off. Now he will favoring that left ankle, looks like. He's turned out to be the most productive of the receivers here in the first two ball games, and now he hobbles off the field. Second down and 12 for Tennessee. This cross nowhere to go. They closed in for both sides, and middle is fired up. Demetrius Walker was one of the key men. Here's Clawson, you see, just boxed in. Going to lose four yards on this. He's boxed in. Houston was responsible for one defensive end. Michael Munoz responsible for the other. Neither one of them get a block, and the pressure gets to Clawson. So now Tennessee looks at a third and 25. Third down and 25. Leading only 17 to 3. Lawson back. Still looking. Going to try to run it. And not going to get the first down. And going to get hit out of bounds. Crowd wants a late hit. But no linen on the ground. right in the middle bench as we see let's take another look good protection by Tennessee good coverage by middle Tennessee downfield Clausen still looking for something he decides to tuck and run and I think this is a late hit but I'll have to watch it and see his left foot is out of bounds when he gets the hit right there his left foot's out of bounds maybe too close for the referee well, the referee's looking two of them, as you see in your picture, right at it. So neither one reached for a ball. Crowd sees it on the jumbotron now, and that's the reaction you hear. Here is Dustin Caldwell. Booming 
booming kick goes out of bounds at the 10 yard line. That's the first punt of the night for Tennessee, and they only lead 17 to 3. That tells you a lot of drives have fizzled out, right? You're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. All right, we got 10 minutes and 54 seconds, a lot of time remaining. Caldwood with a good punt that went out of bounds. His first punt, only punt of the night, and he nailed a good one. With the middle down with their backs to the goal line, somewhat on the 10-yard line. Steve Landis and Enrico Hines carrying on a little conversation there. The referee and the middle quarterback. Tennessee's been penalized almost 80 yards tonight. Middle has been pretty well free of penalties, only 10 yards. Three receivers set, one on the right, two on the left, keeps two backs in, hands it off to his tailback, and he's going to be warmed under. Tennessee's defense waiting for Dewan Hicks and about five men in orange led by Carlton Neal made the stop. So Tennessee's defense now has got to try to take control of this football game because the offense has just been sputtering since the first quarter. And a good tackle there. A good job of stuffing the, the run by Robert Pease and a good job by Clark Neal of stopping the runner. Pease has played pretty well tonight, hasn't he? In the shotgun. Hine looking for some running room, and it's not there. Back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. Carlton Neal again. Carlton Neal came to Tennessee as a potential linebacker. Was voted the most improved player in spring, and he's done a good job moving to defensive end now. And a good job of fighting up blocks and making plays. Just stays after the play. That's what you want in a defensive player is stay after the football play. Remember, he is replacing the injured Constantine Richmond, who with the knee injury is out for the season. So Tennessee's defense tried to rise to the occasion on a third and nine. Hines in the shotgun, looking, throwing, incomplete, covered nicely by Tennessee. It was covered by Jabari Greer. And also a couple of other guys coming up. Greer primarily responsible, intended for right. Good coverage by Jabari Greer. This is the same coverage that Willie Miles had on the play that they call pass interference. Good play by the Tennessee cornerback, both Miles and Greer. Good job of getting his left hand in there at the last moment and batting the ball down. So, the punt by Billy. They rush all over him. They block it back through the end zone. Tennessee had the punt block on. They saw something. And they blew everybody in for the safety. I mean, they had everybody coming. Andy McCollum is saying, what happened there? We'll take a look at it and see how many guys actually got a hand on it. I think more than one. Big play for the Tennessee defense. They really came through. Derek Tinsley was one of the guys in there. And I've never seen him on a pass blocking situation before, have you? It looked like a track meet at Tom Black Track and they're coming out of the block. Tennessee just three people around the, the ball. Yeah, there are three guys there. And I think Tinsley might be the guy who got it. There he is, number 20. So they brought in one of the speedier guys for the pass blocking duties and he came through with it. Well, actually three, at least three guys got through there. You're watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. Paul Wheeler is the guy who's gonna kick off. Jones is deep for Tennessee at the 15 yard line. 20, 25, got a crease, still going. Still going to midfield. So Tennessee in great shape. It was Wheeler who finally made the stop and saved the touchdown. 
Mark Jones almost broke that thing. A little bit of a hesitation when he started just enough to open up that crease and find a little daylight. All of Tennessee's guys have been doing a good job in kick returning and punt returning. And if you're Tennessee, you hope those two plays on special teams, the block punt and this return really starts to spark your football team. The offense takes it down and puts it in the end zone. We call it the 49. As you see, it's the length of the football shy of midfield. It'll be first down at that point and 10 to go for Casey Clawson. He's coming. Let's see if they can get it in sync now. Here is Cedric Houston. That's one way to do it, but a flag goes down, and we're probably going to have a block at the back or a hold <laughs> on Tennessee because it fell right by the runner. And it fell right in front of the Tennessee bench, right in front of Sanders and also the head coach, Philip Fulmer. During the run, holding by the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Tennessee is pretty close now to 100 yards in penalties here tonight. Well, to be exact, 97. Is that right? 11 penalties for 97 yards. 11 so penalties and three turnovers. We were close. Yeah, three big turnovers you add to that. And you wonder really how they're leading. There's the handoff on the delay. The trap play in the middle, and it gets a pretty good yardage by Cedric Houston up to about the 41-yard line. Five-yard gain, closer to the 42. But it's still a long way from a first down. It's second down and 12. Now, Tennessee got the great run back by Jones, got to midfield in great position, then committed another penalty. Here they are trying to get out of that hole again. It seems as though the only life on the Tennessee football teams is on the special teams. The offense just casually going about their business. You'd like to see them get a little more pep in their step. Houston, 13 carries for 74 yards, so he has done a good job. Lawson apparently didn't like what was called or what he saw with the defense, so he calls a timeout and is very casually going to the sidelines. And the Middle Tennessee team will, in its entirety, come to the sidelines. So. Clawson now conversing with Randy Sanders, talking with some of the coaches upstairs, no doubt, to see what they see. Clawson on the season, passing 45, hitting 45 of 61. He's got hitting around 73% of his passes. A look at some uh, figures in the air tonight. Tennessee receivers with Brown, Scott, Jones, Houston, Fleming, and Montreal Jones. So they've spread it out very well. They have moved the ball. They have just died with the mistakes when they get into scoring position or they've shot themselves in the foot with a penalty or with a turnover. Willie Clausen done a good job in Tennessee of just spreading the football around. Seven different receivers. Eight minutes and 12 seconds of football remaining at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville before over 107,000 fans. Bob Bill here along with Terrence Cleveland bringing you the action. Good to have you with us tonight. Tennessee has a week off and then Florida comes to town. Well, you better approve that offense before the Gators get here. Here's the handoff to Tinsley. Tinsley can't find anywhere to go, and he's going to be sworn for a loss. Well, whatever they saw, the coaches to call that play, I would erase that one right quick from the books. And Tinsley's a young back. This is designed to go right. He feels the pressure and wants to reverse his field, and you don't do this. Continue with the play in the direction that it was designed, and he'll learn that. Lynch among four Blue Raiders to make the stop that time for for middle and it's now a third and 16. So Tennessee with a great field position at the 50. They're backed up now to their 43. They've got to make 16 yards just to get a first down. So they're in danger of squandering that field position from the safety. There's the pass complete, but it's far, far short of a first down. Complete to C.J. Faith. 
who makes his first catch of the night. So he becomes the seventh receiver for Tennessee tonight. So the balls will have to punt it away. Facing now a fourth down situation and the clock showing seven minutes to go. Justin Colquitt will come in for his second punt of the night. Good shot there, uh, Colquitt. Gary Wright is deep, standing back at his 10-yard line for the Raiders. I'm assuming Colquitt will sort of angle it for one of the sidelines. Gets it a mile high, but kicks it straight downfield. They're going to let it go, and Tennessee will down it, I believe, at the one-inch line. It is Mark Jones who got downfield and downed it on the one foot line. <laughs> wow. I tell you, the meetings that will be short tomorrow will be the special teams meetings. Special teams, guys, you just say thank you for a great night. Now you take the day off. <laughs> Ooh, look how he pulled up. If he'd had an extra coat of shoe polish on that, it would have been on the line. So special teams play the only real bright spot for Tennessee since the first quarter. And it has been exceptional. Kick returns, punt returns, block kick. Then a great coverage like we just had right here. But they haven't been able, the offense, to capitalize on any of those. Middle with their backs in the end zone, trying to find just the shred of daylight. They get maybe a yard, and that's about it. Running Hicks straight ahead. Dewan Hicks. Dewan Hicks was a was the son of a military man, so he moved around the country a lot, and I guess some of the scouts may have lost track of him and wound up in Huntsville, Alabama. I think UAB offered a scholarship, and Alabama did not. And to my knowledge, no one in Tennessee except Middle found him. Second down and nine. Tennessee's defense trying to keep Middle bogged up here in the end zone. Remember the last time they were down here, they blocked a punt. With a man in motion, they got hit in the end zone. Loose football rolling around. Is it out of the end zone? No, it is a touchdown. Kevin Simons made the hit. Ed Kendrick. And Kevin Simon. Simons came up with the football. Kendrick, they have gotten the hit that separated him from the ball. We'll take a look at it on replay, but again, it is not the Tennessee offense, but the Tennessee special teams and defense that make the play. They bring Jabari Greer on a blitz, and he makes an exceptional play. Kevin Simons does a good job of keeping this football in the end zone. Tennessee gets the touchdown. It was 33 in there. Number 33 who made the big hit. So Jabari has come up with two or three key plays tonight. Here is Newman's extra point. It is up and it is good. If you just joined us and you wonder what's happened to Alex Walls, he pulled a muscle and is sitting this game out. As I said, they try to go with the rollout to Hines and Jabari Greer just too fast on the corner blitz. Good play, good recover by Kevin Simon, his first collegiate touchdown. It was a tremendous effort by Tennessee there. Rashad Moore actually made the big push, though. I'll give him some credit in there. We almost gave him too much credit, but he did make the big push that caved everything in. You are watching University of Tennessee football on CSS. So Tennessee is up now 26 to 3 and it's thanks to special teams play and thanks to defense almost wasted well they did waste what turned out they got the safety and then got great field position on the kick return and then had to kick it mark jones made a great play and then you saw the other great play right there by Jabari Greer, among others. Kevin Simon coming up with the football and six points for Tennessee. Kept it on the checkerboard. 
Tennessee just needed someone to make a play, and Jabari Greer comes up with the big play. Now Newman will be kicking off for Tennessee. See if he put it in the end zone. It's been bumped up pretty good tonight. Yes, it's going into the checkerboard, but from a couple of yards out there, they're going to return it, and that was a mistake because didn't get anywhere close to the 20. In fact, didn't even make it to the 15-yard line. 14 yards. And at that point, Middle Tennessee, that may be our player of the game right there. <laughs> Kevin Simon, we have to name one before the night is over, and uh, there are several to choose from, but pretty well assure you they're going to come from the special teams or the, or the defense. Rico Hines standing up at quarterback on a throw long and way over the head of everybody, including his intended receiver, Richard Lee, goes out of bounds. Tennessee had Greer covering. They also had Richard Baker coming over from safety to cover. Greer has just played very, very well tonight, as has Willie Miles, as has both the safeties. And middle force to throw the football down the field. That's just not their game. They're, as you said, they throw those quick strikes. But at this point in the football game, they're going to have to try something downfield. And Tennessee knows that, and they're coming hard. And the ball makes the play at the 20-yard line. First down, way short of that. Hines carrying the ball. Gabriel Wilson, here's another guy who's made several key plays tonight. Actually picked up five yards. So they are a solid five yards away from a first down. Third down. Mondre Dickerson and J.T. Mapu are the defensive ends for Tennessee, along with Abreu Franklin at those tackles. So they're getting some young guys in, getting them some, some really good playing time. And Wilson in the secondary. Here is a completed pass and. It should be enough for a first down. First down and 10 to go for the Blue Raiders. He had time to throw that time, and he found his receiver. Ewell, David Ewell, made this catch and made the first down. Four minutes, 20 seconds of football remaining in Knoxville on a September night. Tennessee and middle meeting for the first time ever in football. They've met in all other sports, but not football. Of course, Middle has just entered the Division I. Big defensive stop here by Tennessee. Absolutely nothing going there as they drop. Now, Braille Franklin was one of the key men in there. Hicks had nowhere to go. Also, J.T. Mapu. This kid is a Mormon, and it's our understanding that next year will be his 19th birthday, and he has to spend two years in public service, and so we probably won't see him for a couple of years after this. But he'll be an elderly statesman when he gets back, right? <laughs> and a more developed football player and person. He's a pass out of the flat Tennessee spell held that one pretty good and dropped him. Nowhere to go for Calico. It was Jason Mitchell, one of the young linebackers who made the stop. So Tennessee is getting some youth in there in the final minutes of this ball game. And a good play by Julian Battle, and as you said, Jason Mitchell. Also, Corey Larkins, the good kick returner back in, and he's a backup safety. Clock is ticking with 2.50 to go. Tennessee up 26 to 3, and it's not been easy for the balls. They came in favored by 22. Here is the quarterback taking off. Everybody covered downfield, so he runs it up to the 35 yard line before Robert Peace made the stop. Junior linebacker from Louisiana in on another tackle. He's made several tonight. Tennessee linebackers have all played exceptionally well. I would agree, and you have to say that Middle Tennessee, this loss is all not, it, it's really 
not that bad for them, Bob. If you think of that, they played Alabama tough. They get $500,000 for that game. They come in and play one of the top five teams in the nation, play them close, and they get $500,000 for that. So they take a million dollars home in the first two ball games. That's some good recognition. All right, Tennessee getting the ball back. Rashard Baker up to about the 45, and Tennessee will kill it here, probably with runs with a minute 54 remaining. The athletic director at the at Tennessee, Doug Dickey, and the head coach, Philip Fulmer, are very close friends with the athletic director at MTSU, Boots Donnelly. And, by the way, that punt 35 yards and the return 14. This game came about because Houston had canceled a game with Tennessee, and Tennessee then offered Middle a chance to come on board. Tennessee's remaining schedule, Florida, then Rutgers, Arkansas, go to Georgia. So it's quite a little ways before Tennessee goes on the road. Technically, they went on the road to Nashville, but most people consider that a home game. At nine games within the state of Tennessee this year. And if the offense didn't get a little better, they need to get two more scheduled in the state. The offense is good. I don't mean to imply that. They're very, very good, very talented. They just were out of sync tonight, made too many just costly mistakes with penalties, penalized almost 100 yards, had too many turnovers, and just bogged themselves down when on time and time again they we're in a position to get into the end zone and maybe put it away comfortably, but they couldn't do it. And they'll have two weeks to really work on their mistakes and get ready for Florida and then the tough schedule that they have to play throughout the remainder of the season. Tennessee running the ball and certainly keeping it on the ground just to run out the clock, and we're just now going under the minute mark. Under one minute. Keldrick Williams got a carry tonight, so I'm trying to count up. I believe that's five tailbacks they have used tonight. Again, rotating the running backs, taking every opportunity to get those players some experience. I may be counting one time when Troy Fleming carried the ball. I think he carried it from fullback, though, didn't he, on that play? just now the crowd is beginning to file out so they kind of held their breath here on this one tonight there's a sweep to the right the clock now ticks down to 17 seconds and that should do it Tennessee running out the clock well they're going to stop it now I guess to move the chains so they have to do that on a first down you stop the clock and then it restarts with a set of the chains so down to six seconds five and this game is all over well congratulations to tennessee on their second victory of the season but also congratulations to mtsu on a well-played football game and there's good scene right there the two head coaches embracing at the midfield Derek tensely talking with coach mccullum so a good feeling by all and like you said, $500,000 pay check for a middle, but also very important, proof that they can play with the Southeastern Conference team. They've done it two weeks in a row.